My gosh, you didn't come in until you had those goats. So I learned these little things way back there about what was a thrifty goat. They're the ones that make you money. And most people, in my opinion, spend too much time. When I was a veterinarian practicing, I'd go to a ranch and they might have a thousand ewes, wormy, stomach worms. And they were in there bottle feeding 30 dead burned little doggies. That extra powder milk costs a lot of money, takes a hell of a lot of time. A dairyman veterinarian out in Arizona taught me the best advice there was. He said, give everything reasonable care, reasonable care, and get rid of the rest. And I want to encourage us as cashmere breeders, don't sell the bottom 25% of your goats to another breeder. Ship them to slaughter or keep them yourself. For, you know, there's a lot of friendly goats. you got special traits you like. We're all in, entitled to keep some of those. But please, as a breed improver, don't sell that bottom 25 to 30% of your goats to somebody else. There's no greater feeling than to sell somebody else a goat and to see them do good, even if they beat you. Huh? It's actually more rewarding. Uh, yeah, in some yeah. Ways. it, it, it re really is. Uh, now, we, I don't know if you're looking at that book that I sent around and we can look at it later. But so we're going to look at the teeth and I want you to come on up closer. And we may get hit here in the face. All right. Now, come over here. All right. Now see, everybody looks, see, you want them to, to, the back of the front teeth, there's no upper front teeth, to hit the back of the gum. I mean, you want the back of the teeth to hit the gum. I paid a thousand dollars for a good Angora goat one time from an outstanding breeder. And then one year I was culling the goats at the 400 sale billies at, at the Angora goat show, and we had lots of them. And 13 of our breeders had goats with bad teeth. We had gotten careless. We didn't pay attention. I made a lot of old timers mad when I sifted their goats. I bought a goat and I just assumed he was good. Turn him out in the pasture, he'd get poor again. Finally, I caught the son of a buck after about the third time turning him out and in his teeth, the gum was shorter than the teeth. They have to break the, the limbs off and the grass off, so that's why that contact is so important. Now, the South Africans taught us this, especially in the boar goats. Okay, now, you, so you get in the habit, and you see that pink skin? There's no sense in drenching this goat. Perfect. Don't drench this goat. You might drench one or two out here, but don't drench them all routinely. See that good pink color? Okay. What he, what he means by drenching is warming. For some of work, yeah, yeah. Okay, but what I want you to see, see the back part, if you notice on the reasons I gave, what, have you looked at the teeth gum structure on some of those fleece comments? See the back of the gum, it's way back here. And see then the back of the lower gum, it's right, pretty much straight up and down. When you're judging the old goat class, you know how a goat, an old nanny's mouth may get the teeth stick out? And in 4-H club, we, you teach your grandkids or children to say, tell the judge, say, well, she's got her teeth hung up in the fence. Hmm. You just look at these, the back gums, you want that straight up and down, the upper and the lower. And if it's off even an eighth or a quarter of an inch, it's going to be bad. But if you have a little flare on the bottom teeth, particularly an older animal, that's normal. Yes, if if their gums are... If their gums are lined up. And you can look at that at, a, at a one or two years of age. In other words, you do not buy a goat mm -hmm. until you've looked <laughs> yeah. at the teeth. You go to a sale and the ones you pick cost too much money. And so you're sitting there in the arena, sale barn, 
and another one comes in. They, they always look better up there in front, you know. <laughs> if you didn't look at that goat, don't bet on it. And then the next thing, and most sifting committees and judges won't do this. Now, one or two of you come over here and stand, one here and one there, will you? Just get up against him. Okay, now we're going to look at the scrotum. Now come on around here. Let's come on around here. All right. Now, you're going to grab the scrotum and you're going to get up above the testicles and there's the card there. And you feel for little abscesses. Maybe the size of a, of a thumb marble or a walnut. But you're feeling for an abscess, which is usually unusual in goats. Then you come down and this is the epididymis at the bottom of the testicle. And see there, his, his testicle scrotum is not the biggest, but it's certainly adequate. But the main thing is, they're uniform, and they're not twisted. Sometimes you'll have one testicle like this, and that can affect, affect in cattle at least, the udder structure, the udder structure. But do you want to come up here and feel what, what we're talking about? Do you see it? And so, if you're looking at a group of them, now the young billy kids at weaning, some of them, a scrotum will get larger. But it's so important that fertility and not bringing a disease back, an abscess back to your farm. Can you tell us a little bit about split scrotum and okay. what, what, the, what the sort of parameters are around it? Okay, now like I wrote on those notes to people, I said, well, go back home and look at your billy goat. Does he have a, a full scrotum? and not split over an inch. The colored goat people, somebody got in there and changed the rules and said they can be split 50%. Uh, that was just why years ago in South Africa, the boar goat's the most popular goat now, you know, made, making the most money, so to speak, as a whole. But one old breeder in South Africa has influenced for years to come the boar goat breed because he was on the committee and his goats had a parrot mouth and they overlooked it. The easiest way to improve your flock, uh, and you, am I talking too long? To improve your flock or to solve a problem, a, a genetic breeding problem, is to ignore it. And my South African Angora friends, they say a split scrotum is okay. And they go to science. They say the air circulates more and so it's more fertile so it won't get too hot, the semen. Bull corn. <laughs> now, up here where y'all are, sometimes the freezing weather, you do need a little more hair on the scrotum. But don't rationalize. And it, go ahead, Jane. You ready to look at a little a smaller? Yeah, yeah, we can. But. Close your eyes, and this is what I want you to think of the kind of goat to buy. Because so many people think that cashmere goats, we just, they just don't have as good a body. And that's wrong. Okay, right. now, that have it. See, it, it's, you don't look just at the teeth, it's the back, the bottom part of the lower gum and the back part of the upper gum. And one time I was out in Alberta and I think Dorothy's passed away. So you're looking right, right here. Yes. Stop it. Josh, you're doing good, you're gonna be tired. Okay. Sorry, I'm used to it. Now. <laughs> He's a horse. <laughs> See, he's got a full scrotum. That's the additivity. And if one's bigger than the other, there's an abscess there, or sometimes they're twisted a little bit. He's a little crusty. Okay, and some of them will have a larger, if you want to measure them, you find the biggest diameter there and, and compare them. Okay, now let's look at the fiber. Let's look at the fiber right quick. To me, this is more important 
than the fleece competition on your property. Because it's hard when we hand grabbing. Some people I'm sure had some extra guard hair or some short hair that when I grabbed in there three to five times, some got luckier than others on what we drug out. Okay, but you look on the neck. You see, you, the guard hair is longer than the down. Pull at the bottom. Okay, come up here. Now I'm gonna be blunt, Miss Jane. Well, it, it's still early, but it, it, it's uh, kind kind of sharp, but it's gonna grow. But there's not much style there on the neck. Pass that around. So when you say style, what do you the mean? wave, the crinkle. Oh, okay, all right. The, the, in other words, sheep have mohair doesn't have much of a. It just has a little slight wave. Mm -hmm. Wool has crimp. Right. But the cashmere, and if we have a blackboard, maybe sometime we'll have time to show it, but. It's it's a crinkle. I mean, it's not a smooth crimp. You, you saw that today, I hope. But don't go right. Here's the prettiest hair. Don't pick it first. I would look at this one. And, and so there's not as much wave there. I would go look at the next goat. <laughs> now, Jane knows the breeding stock, and we're good enough friends where... I'm calling it like it is. I hope this goat will make a liar out of me. So then we come back, and that's why I usually wear my necktie up there, a black one, or have the board and one white arm or something, a shirt. And when you're judging, you simply put those... There. How's the daughter doing? Um... She's doing okay. She. Well, we all need to keep praying for Debbie and, Thank you. and the Jacob's daughter. So then we come back, and you so you put that on the board, and then we get it from here from the side. Oh, that looks good, see? But now looky, come up here, come up here. <laughs> now, this hair looks pretty good, doesn't it? But if you look over here, not talking about the guard hair. This little hair, see there's not as much wave there. That's what we're talking about. You'll see on some of the notes, I'll put excellent or good style and then make it right out to the side. But a few fibers that are low, low crinkle. Okay. Now there's another fiber sometime, we wrote intermediate fiber or tertiary, because they're born with different follicles. One follicle there is for the guard hair, another one is for the down, and then there's a third one, they have some of them, especially it shows up when they're younger, and as they get older it usually disappears some. Like Kemp is in the Angora mohair, it's kind of like guard hair, it's, it's, it's a different fiber doesn't take dye. But do you see that difference? See, there's not much crimp there. Now, that's a small percentage. When we were learning about this in the late 80s and early 90s from the people in Rhode Island that had the big mill and they bought a lot of imported hair, but they're not, they went bankrupt over in China, Forte, they really emphasize this to us. We want it to have that crinkle all the way out to the end. From a practical viewpoint, I don't think that's as critical. Okay, now, you know, we used to not have on the scorecard, and we can thank Wendy's one pe person that alerted us to this, and I was looking through some of these old cashmere mirror magazines, and there, in the early 2000s, and there was Jane McKinney's name. <laughs> uh, so we've got a lot of experience here. But the, the guard hair, see, it's kind of hard to see. In other words, the D hair has trouble seeing it too and getting it out. So, 
The timing of the combing this fiber is so important. Some of those goats that we place low really have good fiber, but we couldn't tell it what was in that bag because they start shedding their coarser fiber first down, then they still have some of the finer fiber, and then they'll shed this in the summer, you know. But the billy goats get to rutting and intending to fence jumping, and so it's hard to evaluate the hair. I want you to go back this fall and evaluate your billy goats fibers sooner than you would maybe the nannies. Okay, so now we come on back, but this is going to be long enough. Yeah, look at, look at that. Okay. We come down to the bridge. This is, you know, in the stifle. And sometimes they do not have very long staple fiber length on the bridge. So this is very important. When you're combing, I know a lot of people, and, and please don't take this personal, but they'll comb the fiber from one doe. Her name may be Patsy. And they want Patsy's down to go in that scar for whatever. And then they go to all that trouble of paying to have it dehaired and then stay up at night and pull a few more fibers out and then make the yarn. My sister's, you know, one of those guys that used to write a lot of articles about mohair for spinoff. And so I, I can't knit myself, but I've been around cracky a whole lot. And these are all about the same fiber. So we could literally take the fiber from this goat and put in one pile. Like we said, it doesn't have quite the style. And this on the rich is going to usually be a little shorter, but it's still early. But from a practical viewpoint, on this goat, we can put it in the same pile. This does have less style, maybe slightly coarser. But what she would do is either you wouldn't even waste your time maybe combing this out if it's not going to be that good. It's got to be an inch and a half long on the goat to get good hair out, to get that one and a quarter inch minimum as a rule. Okay, usually, see, see the hair difference there? In other words, that guard hair is protecting that fiber. You'll see some on some of the notes that we wrote, it was brown and weathered. In other words, well, I've got one of these pictures here that in Texas, when we first started out in the late 80s and early 90s, we said, well, heck, a lot of our goats don't have guard hair, or what we call our Spanish goats with cashmere. So we'll just solve that dehairing problem. We'll select these goats that don't have much guard hair. It just has the real pretty supposedly cashmere, but it was brown and weathered and tippy. And that either breaks off, which takes away from the true length, or when you're, if it doesn't break off in the processing, it makes little piles, peels, what do you call that, peeling? Peeling. In the yarn. So some people are disappointed with their sweater or, or their scarf. So there's usually a reason for what these old commercial buyers had. But this is a goat to to uh, wait for. Now let, let's look to see what how he's going to go. But usually you can tell on the second clip what you're going to have. Okay. I want you to look at his ear. Now see, that's what we call a fox ear. They're standing out some. That's not bad, bad. It is a hereditary trait. But I've got a goat I'm so proud of. He's part boar, and uh, his daddy was has been some champions. Uh, a white goat, perfect body. Mm. Got the guard hair back. But we're getting a few, what you call these pinched ears, that a folded ear. And I traced it back to a champion. I mean, in the big boys, 
came from New Zealand. <laughs> and so it may be two or three breedings back when you don't eliminate a trait and it crops up to bite you later on. I've often found that kids that will have that pinch at first that opens right up within yeah. a few weeks. Especially if you, you can put a clip on it or whatever, but you need to notice that. And some of that is due to twins and triplets being petition, uh, yeah. positioned in there. But here again, be honest with yourself and, and, and at least record it. What is the downside of that feature? Well, the, that's a good question. There's really not, from a practical viewpoint, except that it can be inherited and we may have something in our own herd, but you don't want to buy another default and bring into your herd. You, you follow me? Is it, is it, yeah, is it an aesthetic issue? Is it an aesthetic issue or is it a functional issue? Okay, to both. Mainly we think of it as an aesthetic issue. Okay, the other point is, and especially some of you where you have more moisture, you can get ear infections because the air can't circulate in there. Do you consider it a, a, a defect in terms of the overall cashmere goat standard confirmation? Well, it's one of those little things, the crooked tail, one point or something. But since it can be and usually can be considered inherited, you want to want to be with. This, this definitely was. This came from a goat um, that I bought from Robin Linda Bell up in Maryland. Uh, which was a, a tan badger um, mm. and every every single um, kid comes out with these ears it's mm. just amazing I'm, that's how I can identify like the ear, you mean the ears stick, stick straight yeah, out sm very flop. small um, their ears are totally different than the yeah. standard and back home most